cool we are live i think i'm pretty sure they can hear you are uh, we becky say something yeah there we go I, just, I saw it. so you know what i can hear you it shows up on the little thing i'm doing so good super professional uh as always <laughs> i'm rick i'm the game master for hammer the gods and uh the host of this show so welcome to our bullshit <laughs> <laughs> uh, before I get to the announcements, Becky, I know you're not uh, new to this channel, but who are you? Where do we find Hi. you? Hi, my name is uh, Beats by Becky. You can find me here on Twitch at Beats by Becky. We're on a bit of a hiatus at the moment, but we are currently running a campaign called The Inexplicable Inspectors, which is like if you put Phasmophobia, Supernatural, and Ghost Adventures into a campaign, that would be Inexplicable Inspectors. Amazing. Just a bunch of brooding, chaotic uh, ghost hunters, essentially. <laughs> uh, you can also find me on TikTok um, at Beats by Becky, where I still need to finish posting the uh, clips from the Crushes and Cryptids finale that happened almost a year ago. <laughs> it's totally fine. It's a thousand percent fine. I cannot tell you how many times. Is that I've been editing podcast episodes and like listen to it. I'm like, this was a couple months ago. No, it was like a year ago. Everything. Yeah. Totally, it's fine. totally good. Uh, yeah, so to move on to our announcements so we can get going, uh, this is session 12, which is crazy. Um, it does not feel like it's been that long, but uh, as always, the sponsor is Canadian Dice. Go to canadiandice.ca and use the code THEVACTAIR, all one word, for 10% off your order. And this week, I am pretty sure it's already come across because, you know, we've been bullshitting for a while. Uh, but the dice pick of the week for Maggie is the Royal Spender. Uh, they are not peasant dice, just so you know. And they're purple. So, you know, go do the thing. Uh, <laughs> second announcement is, as always, go check out the merch store. It's at tinyurl.com slash merch for excellent designs like the hat... Bleh, half orc energy words are hard uh and the back blob it says it's new and exciting it's it's exciting it's not new anymore but it's very exciting <laughs> uh our last announcement i think yeah last announcement uh so tomorrow as always affy and artemis are in legacy of fire on dm jeremy's channel at 5 30 eastern uh due to a scheduling conflict so slight change in time there uh, back on Monday at 8.30 for Mistwalkers. Um, no MCC this coming week due to scheduling again, uh, but they will be back on June 7th with Cat Lady Liz. So that's exciting. Uh, Thursday is a song of Crystal and Shadow with DM Sophia at 8.30. And Fixius 5 welcomes a new player, in theory, hopefully, uh, at 8.30. I think I said, no, it doesn't say there. I didn't say on Friday, but Fixius 5 is Friday. It's always Friday. All the F sounds. Anyway, that's my spiel, and let's get started on some some bullshit in space. Uh, so, Becky, I will have you do our first roll of the day, if you would do me the honors. Sure. <laughs> that's gonna be a six. Excellent. So I, it doesn't like say in the, the little bit of rules that it does have that you have to do this, but I like to start off with. Uh, the interplanetary travel because i think it just kind of gives us something to you know see how we vibe right uh yeah. so a six is you share a meal together it says ships rations you know what we've been doing this for a while so you can you can make it whatever it doesn't have to be some boring like space food it doesn't have to be tang or whatever uh our our crew shares a meal together what's the worst part what's the best part Okay. Um, how long have we been traveling? That is a fantastic question. Uh, is Ranger Row new, or have you been a ranger for a little while? I am a bit of a seasoned ranger. I've been probably doing this a while. Okay. Uh, let's say we've probably been out a couple weeks. Okay. Um, I, then the worst part is definitely the repetition starting to kick in. <laughs> <laughs> like it's kind of like the same rotation of food right <laughs> um 
But the best part is that these are the best space pancakes a ranger can find. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Reggie likes to spice them up with love. Reggie is our diamond dinosaur. So, you know. The love is just like whatever he sheds. Little diamond flakes, I guess. Which is probably fine to eat. Totally safe. Not dangerous at all. Uh, No, too soon to tell. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Internal bleeding is everybody's favorite. Um, I'll also have you go ahead and roll our number of cards for our first planet. Five. It's a good start. If I can count. Numbers are hard. Words are hard. <laughs> All right. So Brecket is going to get a three for our first roll, uh, which means we come upon this suddenly. So we land and then we find some shit. Uh, and we find the two of spades. So two. Well, we'll start with spades because that comes up first. Uh, spades are natural phenomena. It gives examples of huge crystal formations, mirages, vividly colored lightning, strange clouds, rocks eroded in strange shapes, veins of precious metals, etc. And two is under the light of the moon. <clears throat> so, you know, starting off, you know, Artemis, there's only four suits, so I'm not that surprised <laughs> that it's a spade again. Actually, we get a lot of... Uh, Hearts and diamonds, more than anything, which are ruins and uh, living beings. So, uh, so under the light of the moon, we land on this planet. Uh, surprise to no one, we are on the night crew, apparently. Yeah, Artemis is always out for blood. Just <laughs> sticking the amoebas on me. I'm surprised that Bree has not made an amoeba redemption just for this stream. Just to torment me. Um... Yeah, so we we land and we find uh, this planet, at least this area of the surface, is covered in these uh, crystals, like these huge crystals that at first, you know, it's kind of shadowed. We don't really see anything special other than like there's a lot of them. Um, but as the moon starts to rise over the horizon, we see that they glow in just this absolutely scintillating rainbow of colors so you know probably going to be a little bit hard to sleep ah damn it i shouldn't be giving you ideas (laughs) mistakes were made (laughs) so breck is just like that's pretty cool i don't i don't know i guess we got blackout blinds on the ship so might be all right it's been a while since we've been in light. I think I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> Listen, light is overrated. And you see that he's extra pale from uh, the amount of time we've been in space with no light. Okay, maybe. Um, or maybe not. We could always just try being in it for a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, I guess if I have to. Because science or something? Yeah, science. (laughs) Uh, If you would like, you are not required, but if you would like to examine them further, these uh, crystals, you could roll your d6 and I'll let you know what you get. Sure. Absolutely. Compare them to the little diamond flex. (laughs) Uh, Six. Okay. Uh, You get to tell us how the feature changes in some way. So how do these crystals change? Uh, what do they look like originally again? Uh, before the light was hitting them, they were just kind of plain crystals. Okay. And now they're just like these rainbow. It's like a rave now. <laughs> um, as soon as uh, Ro touches one of the crystals, it like pulsates into um, like the color of her mood. Oh, um, okay. And she's currently excited, so it's like pulsating yellow. I love that. I love that. Breckett touches it, and it's like a weird pale green. And he's just like, I don't know what that means. Bizarre. How are you feeling? 
great. I feel great. I love light. All right, that's a nine. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Artemis's character, who we've decided apparently is our pilot. Uh, okay, Aaron, I would hydrate, but I literally forgot my drink, so I will do it later. I'll do it. We've got some sugar-free Schwab's ginger ale. Ooh, not sponsored, but you know, mm -mm. if they want to. Money, please. <laughs> uh, so Artemis's character from a while back, we've decided is apparently our pilot, and uh, I don't know if you're in the chat, but. Rory is in the cockpit, which is her character, uh, playing rave music through the robot that we have flying around because we have a little like drone that follows us and she's totally not creeping on us 24 seven while we're out <laughs> in the field. Everything's fine. Uh, but if you would like to roll for our next discovery, we'll draw our next card. Sure. Three. Three. Another sudden discovery. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a whole lot of work for not a lot of effort. Uh, so we've got these seven of clubs this time. And so clubs are plants and other immobile forms of life. I remember that one this time. Uh, let's see. It gives examples of towering trees, carnivorous pitchers, giant ferns, glowing weeds, floating flowers, oozing mushrooms, etc. And seven is near a volcano. So... I, I assume we probably didn't know that we were landing near some kind of volcanic thing because <laughs> I feel like you probably don't land there on purpose, but here we are. Uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, I will pay you 50 of whatever currency we have to eat one of those mushrooms. Oh, bet. Brecket eats a lot okay. of dumb stuff. <laughs> <laughs> eat it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm going to say odds, it's drugs, even it's not. It's a five. <laughs> <laughs> so Breckett is just like, yeah, Breckett is really, really having a good time watching the rave. You got the little, like, drone flying above with rave music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's just vibing. Just know. vibing. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I am going to roll for my further discovery because very entranced having a good time yeah i got a four uh so i add a detail i notice about the feature uh so i'm not even looking at the mushrooms anymore because you know that's way less interesting they're just boring like brown mushrooms um but to break it these crystals are suddenly like they have these weird patterns on them um really just to like go in with the rave theme and it's like striated along it um probably nobody else sees it whenever he looks back at the the drone footage later that's probably not going to show up but he's seeing it it's a good time all right but uh he Let's thinks he thinks that he's like telling you all about this but really he's just like sitting there jaw open like staring for like a solid four hours. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like comes to. He's like, oh. How long was I? How long was it I here? It was four hours. We, I have been standing here just vibing, watching you silently scream for like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> and like tap on my little, little like wrist watch tablet thing. I'm like this, this can't be right. That's got to be... You're making No, it. you ate a mushroom. I don't believe you. I don't do That's drugs. That's fine. We'll watch the footage later. <laughs> He's like, I don't do drugs. I'll like throw him 50 of the currency. <laughs> <laughs> and Here also, that is obviously a lie. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely have seen that there's a black bag of other mushrooms that are in the fridge. So... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new there. I'll like collect a few of the mushrooms to like add to the <laughs> the collection that I'm not supposed to know about. It's not even hidden. It's just like says do not eat. <laughs> Which of course uh happened a while back whenever we had uh whenever Hunter was on and he was playing a really old man who accidentally ate the drugs. 
like you do. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so Alrighty. we're sticking with the night crew theme. Uh, as we are resting, we make our next discovery, which is the two of clubs. So still under the light of the moon and uh, still got the plants. So, hmm. I'm going to say, you know, we do a little bit of exploring, not a whole lot. Um, and we found, oh, that's right, Artemis. Yeah, he. it wasn't just that he ate the drugs. He cooked with them because he was a cook. Uh, and so he drugged everybody like you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time. Everybody was having yeah. fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that we find, um, because we're near, like, volcanic activity, I don't think it's, like, an active, you know, big mountainous volcano, more like a Yellowstone, uh, it'll just blow up and kill everybody one day, kind of, you know, that sort of fun, um, but we find that there's, like, uh, geysers, and near one of the geysers, we find this big, just seemingly empty pit, uh, and as we shine our light down into it, uh, this, like, vine starts to reach out. Brackett's like, hey, um, Ro, maybe you should back up, back, back, back up. Ro, Ro, back, oh, back oh, up. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'll <laughs> take a few running steps back. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, as you start to, the, the little vine's, like, reaching where your leg just was. Like, okay, well, you know what? We'll move on from this. I think that was trying to eat yeah, us. That's... It definitely was. <laughs> uh, you are more than welcome if you would like to further examine it from a distance, maybe. No, but, I'm yeah, good. We'll just, we'll just move on <laughs> from that one. Um, if you want to roll for our next discovery. Oh, yeah. One. A one? Ooh. It's an arduous to get to discovery, so we got to actually do some work now. And we're just sticking with the same same suits. Uh, we got the four of spades this time. So spades again are natural phenomena, and four is in a steep canyon. Neat. So tell us about this natural phenomena in a canyon that we have to climb down. Um. So, like, the rocks in the canyon are covered with this weird, like, pink moss. Okay. Um, and you would think it would be slippery, but it's actually very sticky. So, <laughs> it takes a very long time. And it's, like, kind of like when you, like, lift your foot up, it has, like, that bubble gum thing where it's just, like, <laughs> like strands of it sticking. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I really wish that our jetpacks were working because uh, this is awful. I hate everything about this. Yep. This is, this is pretty gross. <laughs> this is disgusting. <laughs> uh, Artemis, I got a one on my examination, so you gotta draw a bracket stuck in the bubblegum moss. Sorry, I don't make the rules. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything else to add to it since I'm not gonna draw it, because that would, it would just be a stick figure and some lines. Um, so we'll move on to our next discovery. And okay. got a three, so once again, sudden discovery. Because, you know, why why change? Except <laughs> we've got the Ace of Hearts this time, so two new things. Uh, hearts are ruins. The examples it gives are mysterious obelisks, vine-covered temples, abandoned dwellings for people bigger than you, a wrecked spaceship, etc. And Ace is my absolute least favorite card. Uh, because it's the most vague, and I, I just hate it. I hate it. Uh, it's in a field taller than you. So, I'm going to say we we do some, you know, we did some traveling to get down, like, to the bottom of this canyon and whatnot. Uh, don't find anything interesting in the canyon, and then have to make another really arduous journey to the other side through more of the bubblegum moss. Uh, really, we're getting our work in, you know, like we don't have to work out for a week probably because this is it. Uh, when we make it to the other side though, it's a lot higher, so we couldn't see it from where we were 
on the, the first side. But there is um, kind of like half covered under dirt this uh, strange looking building. Like it has weird angles that just seem unnatural. Uh, it's not anything that like humans would have built probably. Um, kind of one of those things that when you look at it, you're like, how does that work? Like that, that, that doesn't look like it should work. And Breck is just narrating all this out loud. Like, I don't, I don't think that's how physics works, Ro. Um, do you see like an entrance? Um, yeah. You want to, you want to check it out? Oh, I absolutely do. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, if you want to roll for that, that'd be fantastic. Five. Okay. Uh, you get to tell us how the feature changes in some way. Um, as Ro approaches it, and uh, she reaches for that, like, um, the door, uh, the ground begins to shake, Ooh. and it kind of lifts up from the, like, dirt, like you do uh and yeah and it's like an abandoned galactic equivalent of an applebee's <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> i i love we've had uh underwater space hot topic we've had space fedex uh now we've had underground applebee's yeah meets cthulhu you know yeah totally fine uh yeah even though like I was the one who discovered it and I don't I don't have the examination, I'm still gonna add more to it because you know it sounds like fun. Uh, mm -hmm. their sign not being in any kind of language that we can translate, even with our uh, fancy babble fish, um, it it just looks like gibberish to us, but obviously some sort of like it means something. Um, mm -hmm. And then it has like this little character at the end of it. And instead of being like an apple, it's just like a mass of like tentacles and teeth. And it's really disturbing. So Applebee's, you know. All right. Slightly terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Brick, it's like, you know, uh, maybe we should, maybe we should see what's inside. Yeah. Rose going to take one of the mushrooms that she took. <laughs> <laughs> Before she uh, starts exploring the Applebee's. Yeah, everybody knows that drugs help you to not be terrified by things. This is an opportunity she can't pass up. <laughs> it's like free therapy, but the opposite. Yeah, immersion therapy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was our last card for this planet. Uh, I will leave it up to you if we want to draw more cards on this planet or if we want to move on to a different one. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to a different one. Cool. Yes, Aaron, more drugs always help. That is the answer. Except for legal reasons, it's not. <laughs> All right, so between planets, I got a four, uh, which is we make up a game to play during a long, empty stretch of space. Um, I'm trying to think of a game that we've not done before. Hmm. I'm gonna say that Breckett found like a a bouncy ball inside of Underground Applebee's, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really slimy. Weirdly, like no matter what you do, it's just always a little bit slimy, um, and it leaves just a little like patches of green uh not enough to like melt anything really but if you touch it it kind of burns a little bit it, like stings uh so obviously he's wearing gloves but he's just like bouncing this ball and uh reggie's just chasing after it and that's that's the whole game all right <laughs> yeah it's a good time reggie reggie is our game master and wins all the games um, I think it would be your turn for our next discovery. So let me, okay. we've got three cards on this planet. Uh, 
two. Awesome. We're getting our work in. So two is an arduous <laughs> to get to discovery. And we are back to spades. So we've got the nine of spades. Uh, nine is deep okay. underground. So we've got natural phenomena, uh, you know, like rocks and all that kind of shit. Uh, underground. Okay. Um. Is it like a cave that That's we went into? That's up to you. Okay. Yeah. When we land, like, there's just like immediately as you step out of the ship, uh, there's a cave. Uh, that row wanders down. <laughs> um, and it, it's kind of like a salt mine. <laughs> okay. Like there's like, like spikes of like salt just hanging from the ceiling and like on the sides. Okay. Yeah, Brecket immediately, like, gets on his little uh, communicators, like, Hey, Rory, uh, send Reggie out here, please. We need to do some science. And Reggie just immediately comes out and starts licking all of the salt. So that's what he does. Yeah, no, he eats everything. I and I figured you I figured you picked up on that by now. As I he's, mean... like, chewing on the, the bouncy ball. I, yeah, that was a little stomach turning, but hey, go <laughs> off, sis. <laughs> Somehow he's managing to like chew on that and lick the the salt at the same time. It's a skill that All very right. few have. All right, hey, you know, gotta recognize talent. <laughs> so I'll do some examination. Uh, I got a five, so. Uh, how this feature changes is uh, like when Reggie licks it, it just immediately it's like sugar where it gets a little bit wet and it just dissolves. And so okay. he's just like slurping up this puddle of salt. All right. Yeah, maybe we should. Hey, Rory, you can you can take him back because uh, I don't want to collapse the whole cave because he gets hungry. Sure, you drink some water there, right? <laughs> yeah, he's just Jeez. like slurping so <laughs> gross and noisily. <laughs> like every dog ever. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So our next one, I got a three, which is we come upon this suddenly. And we've got the six of hearts. So, hearts again are ruins, and six is on the snowy peak of a mountain. So, uh, you know, we we do a lot of uh, a lot of traveling in this cave. We make it pretty far, and uh, whenever we finally emerge on the other side, we're suddenly on the peak of this mountain. Very snowy, very cold. Uh, neither of us are prepared for it because it was not cold where we were a minute ago uh, and so we're just kind of like looking around and see that there is uh, some kind of like door built in um, so like we come out we kind of like look around and it's just a few paces we'll say to the left of us and so Brecket's like you know I, I just saw one of these not that long ago kind of in the same place uh and he's like checking his his charts hey duckbird welcome in duck <laughs> he's like checking his charts like did i come back to the same planet again no no this is this is different so you're more than welcome if you'd like to examine this door and see what it is oh yeah let's let's open the door <laughs> What'd you get on your roll? Oh, forgot to do that. Three. <laughs> uh, you get to add a detail you notice about this feature. Um, When I walk up to the door, I see that it's like 
it's not engraved with like any any like language that we don't understand instead it's like stick figures <laughs> um like it's basically like hieroglyphs but it's just stick figures and it looks like they are uh in like a sequence of dance <laughs> i love it i love it Breck is just like you know uh it's been a few months back but we did we did find like a whole people who they just talk through dance like that's, that's their whole way of communicating uh, so do you think if we them. like do you think if we like do this dance the door will open <laughs> is it just the the dragon dance from avatar oh i was thinking like the ymca or like it could uh, be both yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the amoeba uh, dance. No, not the amoeba dance. <laughs> <laughs> Brecket's ignoring the fact that there's like an amoeba on there. You know, just with a little hieroglyphs. He's like, mm, yeah, we'll just skip that step. So we, we do the uh, space YMCA. And, uh, why, why are we skipping the amoeba step, Brecket? No reason. Everything's fine. I don't believe that. <laughs> you probably shouldn't. <laughs> okay. All right, I mean, hey, I won't pry, but, like, we can talk if you want. <laughs> uh, I'll do the amoeba step. Perfect. Uh, so what happens when we when we do this dance? Um, When we finish the dance, well, it takes us a few tries because we have to be, like, synchronized. Right. Um, But as soon as we, like, finish the dance, uh the you we hear this like little like unlatching and the door slowly begins to um open and like fog is coming out of <laughs> or like steam is coming out of the uh the door is it like secretly a sauna it might be it <laughs> used to say yeah Brickett's like shining his light in there making sure there's no amoebas he's like oh uh kind of Kind of looks like a sauna. Let's uh, let's check it out. All right, yeah. <laughs> so we have our nice relaxing sauna before we go back out in the freezing cold, which is always a great idea. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I think that was my discovery. So I'll have you roll this time. Okay. Four. Four. All right, once again, sudden discovery. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the Ace of Spades. So any field taller than us, uh, whatever that means, it's up to your interpretation. And spades are natural phenomena. So somewhere on the peak of this mountain, there's also a field. Tell us about it. Can you repeat that? I'm so sorry, I zoned out. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> uh, so we, we suddenly come up on a field taller than us whatever that means uh and uh, we find some kind of natural phenomena so okay. tell us about what kind of weird field we find on the peak of a mountain and what we find in it um so as soon as we log in uh we have to go down these stairs it's like winding kind of like we're going back down into the cave a little bit <laughs> um but when we get to the bottom, there's this huge, like, uh, statue of an amoeba. Uh, no, I'm out. I'm out. Done. <laughs> Brecket just immediately books it. Like, he's not running. He's 100% mall walking. Really fast, though. Okay. Um, but uh, inside... Uh, surrounding the statue of an amoeba um, are these like they're like crystals but they have like the same color as the salt okay interesting Brecket, I don't see a single amoeba uh, did you not see the giant one in the middle of the room it's not real it's a mm. statue mm, that's what they all say okay, I, will, I will protect you from the amoebas did you bring a gun? Probably. Mm, I don't believe you. I probably did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, that's uh, not convincing at all. And he's he's I mean, not he's not coming back. Okay, then I'll explore some more. <laughs> <laughs> that that's was actually our last part for this planet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very convenient, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah, we're we're not very far into this, so why don't you do me a favor and we'll roll for our next planet worth of cards. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very small planet. Yeah. All right. And I got a three, so we're just we're not doing a whole lot of work. We're just gonna come upon this suddenly and then probably leave because why not? Uh, okay. This is the Eight of Diamonds, and uh, I know what would make Bracket leave right away. Um, so Eight is on a glacier, and Diamonds are living beings. Uh, so this is not the first time this has happened. Uh, we land on this, this glacier, and Bracket's like kind of looking out the, the viewport, just seeing what he can see, and uh, there's a lot of amoebas. And he's just like, nope, we're, right, we're, we're going, let's go. And uh, just immediately leave the planet. We need to talk about this, bracket. <laughs> listen, listen. No. <laughs> no. Like, which one hurt you? All of them. Like the one that tried to eat my face in my sleep, especially. But I mean, you can't blame an amoeba for being an amoeba. No, I, I absolutely can, and I will. <laughs> all right so uh for our next planet yeah the staging area for the the great amoeba war that is eventually coming so says duckburg in our episode um <laughs> so i got four cards um i rolled for that one so i'll let you roll for our first discovery here six cool Six, I believe, means we're sleeping. Yeah, we're resting. <laughs> and we got the six of diamonds. Yay. Nice. Love, love living beings. Um, six is on the snowy peak of a mountain again. Um, so we, we land on this mountain. Uh, Breckett and Roe are just doing a little snooze. And Rory lands the ship. And uh, whenever we wake up, what do we find? What kind of living creature? Uh, we find, when we wake up, uh, we find a horse that is probably the size of a tractor trailer truck. Okay. <laughs> like was, a giant, giant horse. I was honestly here for just like it's a regular horse, <laughs> but that works too. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> you travel to the furthest ends of space and you find a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a special horse. This horse is like 3,000 pounds. <laughs> yeah, you know, and... I would. It's absolutely not going to fit on the ship, Rory. As soon as, as soon as Breckett sees it, he's just like, no, we cannot. It won't fit. I'm sorry. We'll find something else. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll roll. Never tell me the odds. Thanks, <laughs> Duckburg. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, my further examination... Oh, I get to record how it changes in some way. Um, I'm going to say that... Uh, we, we initially think that it's a horse... But as it like turns its majestic mane towards us, we see that it is a unicorn. Uh, and we thought we thought that it was just like a plain brown, you know, average horse. It's full on like Lisa Frank color unicorn. It's just a trick of the light. Oh my God, Brecket. <laughs> we need to take him home. Listen. This thing will absolutely not fit in the Griffin. We're going to need a bigger ship. Maybe we can make it wings. Can make it, it fly with us. Can it breathe in space, though? Do, do we know that? We can find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Rory, can you can you call in some backup? We're gonna need gonna need like a trailer for this thing. So Breck is just like chilling out, you know, waiting for a a ship to arrive, the space FedEx to arrive with our big trailer for this Lisa Frank unicorn. I'm, I'm trying to talk to it, like <laughs> you know, I'm trying to communicate. Like, you know, we're your family it, now. <laughs> because it sounds fun, I'm gonna say like it can communicate telepathically. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Space what is Home your name? Depot. Yeah. <laughs> Space Home Depot delivers it through Space FedEx. Yeah. Mr. Ed the Unicorn. <laughs> Literally yeah, the size. Yeah, peanut butter and it just starts talking. Literally the size of an Amazon truck. Like. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. You can, you can ride this in the Great Amoeba War. You know, I think like 30 people could ride that easily. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, what if actually this is not a real unicorn and it's like a Trojan horse for amoebas? Nope, 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 nope. Uh, Rory, <laughs> cancel, can cancel that order. Yeah, cancel the order. <laughs> Quick. All right. Um, that was your discovery. I can remember things. Um, so I got a one on our next one. So we're going to have to put in some work. And we're just going all diamonds. Uh, we got the seven of diamonds. So seven near a volcano. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that we find a whole bunch, like a herd of these unicorns. Uh, they're a lot smaller, though. They're like, <laughs> like the size of a house cat. Oh, they're the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, probably. I mean, I wonder how old that big one was. Like, how long does it take him to get oh. that big, you think? I don't know. I and she, You just watch it. She's like kind of like sidestepping. Like she's getting stabbed in the ankles by these, <laughs> by these unicorns. <laughs> Little guy, stop. <laughs> like your, your spacesuit is just full of holes now all around yep. your ankle. <laughs> yep. Yep. Brickett's like holding one out at arm's length like they're adorable and yeah. like holding he's like holding it up to the drone so Rory can see it we can take one right Brickett's got like four more in his arms <laughs> oh I'm scooping up as many as <laughs> uh you know what let's let's both roll and we'll see how many we get Ooh, Brickett's got get five I also have five <laughs> We're bringing home ten unicorns. Uh, we have our own herd of majestic, very majestic Lisa Frank. I almost said flavored, colored uh, unicorns. <laughs> Lisa Frank, it is a flavor. <laughs> I also I love would... Artemis's uh, comment about needing to draw the Griffin, which is our ship, uh, with a just regular horse trailer Basic ass horse like, it's, trailer. like it's even got the little tires on it <laughs> it's not made for space it's just a regular horse it's trailer. literally just like like balancing from side to side <laughs> i really hope you guys don't get uh space sick because i'm not cleaning out the trailer this time i will do it <laughs> uh did you want to roll an examination on this one Four. Three. Three. Uh, that means a thing. Uh, you get to add a detail you notice about these tiny little babies. Um, so just like uh, their, their mother, uh, they can communicate telepathically. Uh, however, they're too small to learn how to, like, control, like, their own minds so every time they like communicate with you they're just projecting what's inside their head and each one has a different song oh my so god so it's just chaos they're like <laughs> telepathic screaming goats yeah but they sing yeah 
So like if Care Bears were screaming goats with telepathy. Mm -hmm. And unicorns. Yeah, unicorn. <laughs> yep. That is the most terrifying thing ever, and I love it. <laughs> hey Maggie, welcome in. Good to see you. Hi. You're just in time for Lisa Frank O'Clock, which is the new segment of this show, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, if you want to roll for our next discovery, we got two more cards. Okay. One. One. Okay. We're putting in some work again. Uh, we've got these seven of spades. So we've had almost all of the sevens now. So seven is near a volcano. Um, and spades are a natural phenomena. So some kind of like rock or uh, it. Let me see. It also has like, you know, crystal formations, mirages, strange clouds, you know, something along those lines. Okay. Um, so as we're like approaching this volcano there, we can see a huge storm. Um, okay. And, you know, there's, there's thunder. There is rain, but it's like <laughs> green. Uh, <laughs> and instead of lightning... It's just projecting slime. <laughs> like, there'll be a crack of thunder and then a giant sploot of slime on this volcano. <laughs> so it's just like Nickelodeon. Yeah. We're going yeah. full 90s today. Lisa Frank, Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what we find. Um, I did my examination and I got a five, so it changes in some way. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that the, the clouds, like they start out kind of dark and then they eventually turn into like these pink clouds. Um, yeah. And the, the slime starts shooting out in all directions. Absolutely. Both of us like get slimed almost immediately. And, uh, the slime is delicious actually. All the unicorns are just laughing at them. <laughs> Yeah, this is what they live on, actually. <laughs> we learned that pretty quickly. Like, the only thing they will eat is uh, Nickelodeon slime. All right. But for legal reasons, it's not Nickelodeon. Yeah. <laughs> Naturally. It's it's uh, unicorn slime. Maggie, sometimes the things you say concern me. Uh, like wanting to eat a lava lamp. <laughs> No, but I definitely want to eat the like pebbles at the like the colorful pebbles at the bottom of a fish tank. Those look real nice. They do look a lot like fruity pebbles, so I'll give you yeah. that. <laughs> All right, My we've got crunched. one card left. You haven't yet. That's that's the concerning thing. All right, so I got a three. Uh, so once again, the theme of the day is we come upon this suddenly. And it is the Jack of Spades. We've gone through probably the majority of the spades, I think. Um, Jack, who is in the desert. So, yeah, uh, we do some journeying. Or just kind of like chilling out in the desert, you know, like you do. Um, yeah. And it's spades. So that's natural phenomena. Hmm. I'm going to say we're just like hanging out there and uh, both of us weirdly see this. We eventually figure out it's a mirage, but initially it's just like this gigantic form of Rory. Just like glaring down at us. Like, uh, Ro, did you, did you slip those mushrooms in our lunch? Cause uh, I'm pretty Not sure it's time. Rory. But I don't remember them being that big. Uh, I I definitely didn't do it today. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I th did. You slip the mushrooms into lunch? And he's like looking at his sandwich, like, mm, no, I think. <laughs> I'm not convinced. Is this a mirage? And as you say that, it just like disappears. Oh, yeah, oh, no, I God. think it totally was. That's probably not drugs, right? That definitely wasn't drugs this time. 
Uh, if you would like to further examine it, you can. I mean, before it disappears. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good on the mirage. <laughs> that was terrifying. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, so, we don't have a time limit on this, but I usually try to stick to about an hour, and we're almost there. Um, okay. So I would say let's finish this out with one last uh, interplanetary travel, All as right. we're as we're taking it back to Hermes Station and uh, hauling a, a horse trailer <laughs> full of baby <laughs> unicorns. Ten unicorns. <laughs> I have named all of them. And there's just like bucket after bucket of just green slime. We stay here for a while gathering it up. Yeah, and we've kind of like uh, got it down to a science so we can start making our own unicorn slime. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like, it absolutely has to be cooked, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we've, we've got people for that. Yeah. Meaning Reggie. Yes, thanks, Reggie. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to roll, we'll uh, we'll do our last interplanetary travel. Four. All right, you get to make up a game that we play uh, during a long, empty stretch of space. What are the rules like, and who wins? Okay. Um. So it's basically like we have to um, like have, hold water in our mouths, and. Uh, we have to try to make the person laugh. Uh, and uh, the winner is Rory. <laughs> Rory does not find any of our shit funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, that checks out. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Reggie immediately loses, like, right away. Yep. Somehow space dinosaurs can laugh really hard. <laughs> fantastic well i think that's a good place for us to call it for the day uh becky anything you want to plug before we head out um you can follow me on tiktok at beats by becky and you can follow me here on twitch at beats by becky uh Sweet. thank you so much for having me this was really fun yeah it was a blast hopefully you come back because uh i think we're i think we're about out of guests that are booked so we're needing to get some more people on. i would absolutely love to <laughs> fantastic maybe next time we'll get you and duckberg at the same time that would be oh god that would be a lot of shenanigans <laughs> uh part of me is like yes please the other part of me is like why do you hate yourself <laughs> <laughs> to be fair until stuff came up and had to be switched today was supposed to be you and cedar the barefoot so like i know uh i think artemis <laughs> told me they were like i hope you don't mind like we double booked you and cedar i'm like I, this is the best day of my life 